Hey guys, on this episode of Stories with Bob, we're going to talk about the NASCAR Magnum of G.C. Spencer. Now, this car is a car that uh, did not originally start out as a Magnum. It originally was a 68 Roadrunner, and over the years, G.C. continued to update it with new sheet metal. Now, I had a chance to purchase this car in 1992 for $6,000, and like a numbskull, I passed on that. I should have bought this car, but I didn't. And a gentleman by the name of Chris DePontes out of Florida owns the car today. And uh, so we're going to talk about this car today, the 1978 bodied Dodge Magnum of G.C. Spencer. Here are some photos Chris sent me of the car, uh, pictures of the car hanging on his shop wall. And as you can see in one of the photos, it is a Charger. Uh, like I said, the car started out as a 68 Roadrunner and ended up as a 78 Magnum. In 75, Dodge restyled the Charger. It basically was a Cordoba with Dodge nameplates on it. And a little bit, a little bit more fancier than a Cordova, I guess you could, a little, a little bit more sportier, I should say. Now, obviously, this car would not have been competitive. Uh, just, just not a very aerodynamic car in any way, shape, or form. So uh, Dodge uh, had to uh, come out with the Magnum in '78, which had better aerodynamics. Now, in here in this picture, you see actor Tom Selleck advertising the Charger Daytona. This was a package to kind of help spruce the image of the car up because Charger fans didn't like the Cordoba styling on their car. So the Charger Daytona was born. It was basically just a decal package, decal and stripe package. Uh, they were available with big blocks. When I was in high school, 78 or 79, uh, one of these, this, this color as a matter of fact, was at the local Dodge dealership in town, and uh, the only one I'd ever seen in that color, and only one of a few that I've seen, period. And then years later, I'm at an auction, and that same car, I believe, was at that auction, and bid up to $20,000, which at that time was extremely high for a, what I call a disco era car. It had very low miles on I think it was only two or 3,000 miles on it. Okay, according to Chris, uh, his Magnum started out as a 68 Hemi Roadrunner. That's how it was originally raced. And I couldn't find any pictures on the net of the Road 68, but I did find these pictures of the 70. I borrowed these off the internet. Uh, now, according to Chris, we're not totally sure that the car was built by Petty Enterprises, but it did have a lot of Petty Enterprises parts on it. So we believe uh, he either had Petty Enterprises installed parts on the car or he purchased parts from Petty Enterprises for the car. But GC only owned one car and he just rebodied it over the years. And it went from a 68 to a 70 to a 72, 74, and then a 78 Magnum. Okay, these next few photos are Chris's photos uh, taken down in Florida at a buddy of his house. Yeah, this is after he purchased the car, obviously. The car is still wearing its Magnum sheet metal. Now, this is the same car that I looked at in 92, and Chris purchased it in 99. When I looked at it in 92, it was in Statesville, North Carolina, sitting behind a guy's house. He had bought it to do some short track racing, dirt track racing with it and he couldn't find anybody to help him with the car and it just kind of was a stalled project and uh seven years later chris comes along he pays more than six thousand for the car the price had gone up since then and uh he bought the car and took it home to, to florida and then the transformation to a dodge charger began shortly thereafter we'll get into that also okay so as you can see in these photos, the car is still pretty complete. I mean, it doesn't have a drivetrain and a motor and transmission in it, but everything else was there. It's like GC Spencer just uh, quit racing and boom, that's how the car, just how the car set. Now, according to Chris, uh, towards the end there, GC Spencer 
only ran the car for two races in 79. <laughs> Uh, he had D DNFs at Daytona and Atlanta, the first two races of the season. And he had another driver driving the car, a gentleman by the name of Claude Ballalina, who was a European Formula One driver. And uh, they could not, the car did not finish either one of the races, and uh, GC decided to retire. He sold the car to Morgan McClure Racing. And this was, I guess, Morgan McClure's uh, start uh, to get into NASCAR. And I believe, I don't know if they campaigned the car or not, but they bought all the parts and everything else. And matter of fact, G.C. Spencer actually went to work for them, is what Chris is telling me. Okay, so Chris is telling me that Morgan McClure Racing sold the car and probably the parts as well to a gentleman somewhere along the 84, 85 who wanted to race the car in one of the lower sportsman classes somewhere around the Charlotte, Central North Carolina area. And that never happened either. That's uh, the third time or the second time the car had been sold, I guess. And uh, I don't believe the car was ever raced again after the DNF at Atlanta. I think it went through a couple of people's hands but never, never went back on the track again. The gentleman that bought the car from Morgan McClure is the one that sold it to the guy that had it when I looked at it in 92. So uh, some people had dreams to race, and they just didn't have the budget and couldn't find the help. And uh, you kind of need both when you're racing uh, these round track cars. It's not like a drag car, so you need pit crews. You need people to help you with different things. So uh, the car basically has sat unpreserved or untouched, unmolested, I guess you could say, for all those years. Well, I'll tell you what, guys, as you can see from the photographs, uh, these these photographs were taken in 99 and thereafter, and the car is basically a time capsule. It's uh, It doesn't have the best pedigree in the world. I mean, it never won any races. No, None of the Magnums ever won any races in the NASCAR series. I think they uh, won one or two in the ARCA series. I think they did win a couple of poles, but they, they basically were the end of the era, so to speak. But this car has... Uh, Surprisingly, held up quite well uh, when Chris had got it. It was a time capsule. You can see it's. Uh, I wish I had bought this car. Uh, it's interesting how it has how it kind of came back into my life. I was just uh, on the internet one day and I saw uh, Chris had posted some pictures of it. So I reached out to him to ask him, was it did he buy the car out of states of North Carolina? And he said he did, which I figured he did. He's how many forty nine Dodge Magnums are out there? And this photo, the Magnum body lines show up quite well. You can see it on the hood and especially on the door. You can see the contour on the door for the, the Magnum's head. And also notice the louvered uh, opera glass or quarter glass, if you will. Clearly a Magnum in this photo. That is a great photo. It really is. And the old dull paint from sitting all those years. As you can tell from these photos, uh, these old NASCAR warriors were a bit crude. They weren't the pretty things that uh, some of the cars nowadays are. They were pretty much all business and uh, kind of Spartan. They were just meant to go fast and meant to race and meant to be easily repaired. Now, Chris has been very generous uh, with his time and sharing information with me. And uh, he does want to uh, return the car as a Magnum. He's in need of some sheet metal. And uh, the, like I said, the car did get rebodied after he bought it as a charger. And then there was some problems with that. And uh, he has decided it's got to be rebodied again. That work was not done correctly. So he said, well, if he's going to rebody it again, he's going to put it back as a Magnum since that's the way the car finished its life. Check out that single pot master cylinder on the firewall there, guys. Isn't that amazing? I don't even know if that's 1968. That looks older than that. So I'm not sure why GC was running that. I guess that's, I mean, it's amazingly simple, but amazingly unsafe. Oh, this is another great picture. Notice the uh, Chrysler steering coupler there. 
Also, what looks to be the aluminum manual steering box, the Chrysler box. Hard to say if that's a carryover from the 68 Roadrunner because the car was involved in some crashes over the years. So it's no way of knowing that. But uh, notice the uh, support brace for the shocks. And the tubular control arm is uh, quite visible in this photo as well as the dual shocks. Pretty interesting. And then here we have the, uh, the nose cone. This is what made the Magnum over the... Uh, charger the cordoba body charger that nose was uh quite aerodynamic from what i understand and uh from what i've read on testing the car had pretty good downforce on the front and notice how that stock uh, steel bumper is tucked up tight also into the body a couple of interesting things here in this photograph uh notice the uh, tubular upper control arm and also the dual shock absorbers which was pretty common in those days uh, look, they look to be old regular old monromatic shocks uh, it's hard to tell if there's any valving on them or not but chances are all this stuff came from petty enterprises and chris is telling me the car still wears the four drum brakes that it came with in 1968 so none of that was ever updated to disc brake when I believe uh, Petty went to a four-wheel four disc brake in 74. So GC, uh, he stayed with drum brakes, and he's got some interesting details on the backing plates. He's going to try to get me some photographs soon so I can uh, share those with you. Hopefully they'll be at the end of this video. Okay, here we go. Uh, Chris uh, slid up under the car at my request and got these photos for us. Uh, this is the front uh, drum, and you can see it's been cut away. The backing plate's been cut away, I should say, to allow better cooling. And also, you can see the backing plate on the rear has been cut away as well. Uh, he's also telling me these are gray rock brakes, which was at the time, uh, that's what NASCAR teams ran when, in 1968, I should say. That's what the NASCAR teams ran was gray rock drum brakes and sh brake shoes and, and uh, all I guess all the associated brake parts that go with that. Pretty cool. Pretty cool time capsule here. Okay, in this photo, you can see the cooler line of attachments on the rear end. This is an eight and three quarter rear end. Uh, most likely came from Petty Enterprises. And also in the previous picture, you notice the backing plates didn't appear to be factory. They had been cut down, but they didn't look to be factory. Also notice the uh, dual shocks and the braided brake line and that aluminum plate just forward of the yoke on the bottom of the car, uh, which I believe is where the cooler was mounted. And here we have the rear leaf spring and the, uh, the shackle hanger. Uh, this most likely also came out of Petty Enterprises, probably some heavy-duty stuff. I'm pretty sure this is still asymmetric-style uh, springs because that's what they offered on their kit cars at the time. And I can get Chris to, to uh, verify that, but I believe that is the case. And it looks to be a pair of sway bars under there also. And here you see the nose comb. Oh, he still has the nose cone. Thank goodness he saved that. That is a that would make a great wall hanger, but hopefully this will go back on the car. Chris is telling me that he had the nose cone on loan to his local Hooters restaurant for a few years also. He obviously has it back now. And here it is as a 74 Dodge Charger. Uh, you can't tell in these pictures, at least I can't, but Chris says the body was hung wrong. There's uh, a lot of gaps. The bumper's not quite in the right place and different things. And uh, he says the uh, something about the car is too long. It's two inches longer than a charger, he, a street car charger he has. So uh, I guess there were some gaps in the roof line and the door is not correct. So he was very disappointed with the way the, uh, the guy hung the charger body on. And the guy tossed all the old Magnum parts. So uh, 
He is, uh, like I said earlier, he is looking for magnum sheet metal. If anybody out there wants to donate some of this cause, it would, he would really appreciate that. You know, I'm not going to lie to you. The car looks kind of cool as a Charger. It really does. And that is um, arguably a more popular body style. But since the car ended its career in NASCAR as a Magnum, and the fact that there's only a handful, we, we're only aware of three or four Magnums that have survived over the years. And there's a bunch of Chargers that have been re redone. So, and also, he was talking with John Welburn. Uh, and he said that John was encouraging him to uh, redo the cars of Magnum as well. And has actually invited him to bring the Magnum to his uh, one of his shows uh, when he gets it done. So uh, I think that's cool. I personally, I'm on board with it being a Magnum. And uh, it looks like that's what's going to happen if he can come up with the parts. So uh, hopefully that will happen, guys. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that little revisit of the GC Spencer number 49 Dodge Magnum. Uh, if any of you guys are uh, old NASCAR fans and you went to the races in the 70s and you saw the number 49 Mopars uh, and you've got photographs or even video of the car or stories of GC Spencer, I would love to hear them. You can, uh, you can send those to me. And if, with your permission, of course, I'd like to include those in an updated video if we decide to do such a thing.